you're going to realize it one day, that happiness was never about your job or your degree or being in a relationship. Happiness was never about following in the footsteps of all of those who came before you. It was never about being like the others. One day, you're going to see it. That happiness was always about the discovery, the listening to your heart, and following it wherever it chose to go. Happiness was always about being kinder to yourself. It was always about embracing the person you were becoming. One day, you will understand that happiness was always about learning how to live with yourself, that your happiness was never in the hands of others. It was always about you. It was always about you. What is happiness about oneself? So usually happiness about oneself is considered to be a subjective and personal experience, right? Because it's your own feeling that's often tied in with you know, your well-being, how you're experiencing life, your moods, your state of mind, and probably the overall fulfillment in your life, how content you are with your life. If you're experiencing you know, lots of joy and you're doing projects that you're passionate about, then it will be tied in with your happiness because external factors tend to influence our happiness. It's tied into your own feelings and experiences, how you see life, how you navigate through life, how you experience your emotions, if you suppress them, if you feel them fully. And the fact that happiness can be tied in to external factors such as relationships, work, events, anything that's happening in your life, all these things can influence your happiness. Why you shouldn't let external factors affect your happiness. I don't think it's generally a good idea to let external factors influence your happiness because they're things you can't control. They're outside of yourself, they're not inside. So we can control what's inside, we can control our emotions and feelings, but we can't control events or things that are going to happen to us from the outside world. You might get fired because the company is going under liquidation. Your boyfriend or partner or husband might leave you for someone else. Someone dearly loved might pass away. And all of these things are external and you can't control them, but yet they're impacting your happiness and well-being. Obviously, it's really hard not to feel anything, you're going to tell me, and that's right. We human beings, we feel feelings and we feel emotions. So if someone we love pass away, of course, we're going to feel something. What I'm saying is your happiness should not depend on external factors to happen to make you happy. If you rely on external factors to dictate how you're feeling and how you're experiencing life, and let's say things go wrong, then you're going to be miserable all the time. Well, there it is. And that's not a way to experience life. I used to let these things affect me a lot, for example. And now I'm looking for the lesson. I'm looking for what I can learn from it. So let's say if I fell at something miserably, instead of beating myself up and, you know, feeling sad or feeling bad about myself, I'm going to think, okay, how can I take this experience, learn from it and just move on and use that as my power? So if my partner leaves me, what can I learn from it? Was it the right partner? How was I in that relationship? Can I grow from it and become a better person? If you rely on external factors, you may find that your happiness is constantly impacted by these external events that you're fluctuating all the time, that we feel quite unstable, you don't feel balanced, and you're rather vulnerable. Instead, we should cultivate our happiness within. That's really where it lays. It's within us. We are happiness. And if you're happy, you're going to project it around you. But if you're miserable, you're just going to attract more of what we're putting out there in the world. And that's not the purpose, right? So happiness starts within and then you just spreads. Now, how can you enjoy your own company? Because if you're not good with yourself and being by yourself and enjoying your you time or me time, 
then you can't be good with others and around others. But do things for you that you enjoy doing. Again, I know not everyone has time, but it's important to try and book in your diary sometime for joyful activities, how I like to call them. So you can actually recharge your energy and be good for others, be good around others, be productive at work, or you know, if you've got a family with your family. It's really important to find balance and find some time for yourself. Second, practice self-care. Take care of not only your physical, but your emotional well-being. Get enough sleep, eat well, but that. I'd say make sure you also feed your mind, not just your body, with information that is interesting, help you grow, help you see things from a different perspective. The other element would be to engage in activities that are helping you distress, such as yoga, meditation, breath work, sound healing, anything that will help you connect with yourself and disconnect from the outside world. Number three, spend time in nature. I know we are more and more disconnected from nature. A lot of us live in big cities, but you will see the difference by grounding and spending time in nature. We need nature as human beings to be happy and feel fulfilled and breathe fresh air and see birds and walk on the grass or on the sand. So it's really important that you try and find a place where you can be in nature, whether it's a park, the garden, whatever it may be like, but just find nature and spend time grounding there. Number five, seek out new experiences. Getting out of your comfort zone and finding new challenging experiences is the best way to feel fulfilled and happy about your life. This can help you learn more about yourself, what you enjoy and grow and expand, which is super important. What can you do so society doesn't alter and impact your happiness? Number one, focus on your values and goals. Instead of performing to society's expectations of you, just do you, be yourself and be centered. Focus on what is important and what you want to achieve in your life. I feel like that's the motto and that's what you should live by. Number two, practice gratitude. Okay, it might sound cheesy, but I used to be one that thought that and I've started doing it for myself. I even have a book where I write every day and this couldn't be better for me. Honestly, when you stop and reflect on what you're grateful for, in your life and everything you have instead of everything you don't have again changing the chip in your mindset then you will realize you're rich from experiences from memories from good things that are happening in your life not everything is negative around you and even if there is a challenge in your life take that as like i'm grateful for this challenge i'm going to grow so much i'm going to learn so much from it and i'm going to overcome it and become a better person Rephrase being in your brain so it can be going from negative to a positive outcome. Number three, we wouldn't be anything without relationships. So focus on finding your tribe and meaningful relationships. This would make your life a hundred times better, I promise. You will be happier, you will have more fun, and you will feel like you belong to people that really support who you are, and love you for you, really connect with you for the person you're inside and not because of society's standards. So find the true people, the people that will stand by you no matter what. Once you find your tribe, cultivate that friendship. It's so important to value your friends living in the world. Number four, and I'm guilty of this, take breaks from social media. And I'm on social media. So I guess social media can trigger your mind in negative ways whether you want it or not because you're seeing other people's lives right and you may tend to compare yourself to other people that you see and you just see a little glimpse of their life you know they're showing the best of their life and we all know that we know that we're not 100% true it doesn't matter how authentic we try to be we're not filming our life 24 7 so you're going to see just a glimpse of things that are happening in someone's day they may be going through hell but you might not know that because they may not show you that they may show you just a fancy and 
and sparkly moments. So I'd say take a break and it's good for your brain. Just read, go outside, practice breathwork, meditation, some activities such as sport that is really good for the mind and the body. Just take care of yourself and your mind and let your mind relax because we get so much information whenever we own our phone. Even when we walk in the street, there are so many ads all the time. So it's important to have a break from all of this because our brain gets stimulated all the time without realizing it. You become a little bit influenced by whatever is going on in the media, social media as well. So make sure you, you know, shut off the phone and be present in the moment and live your life. And last but not least, feel like things are not getting better. I find that it's important to look for professional help. If you're struggling with negative social influence, then it's really good and healthy to have someone trained up to look at your traumas, look at those negative thoughts, make you think in a different way, ask you questions, so you can feel better, so you can understand. So don't feel ashamed to seek for help from someone that is trained up, reliable, someone that you can trust, someone that you feel comfortable with, and someone that has the tools to help you get there. Now, I know a lot of people tend to put other people's first, your family, your friends, but how can you be the main character of your own story? First, it's important to take ownership of your life and make decisions that are good for you. Not think about other people, not think about what they think, but think of yourself and what it means to you and what feels right for you and your happiness. Make choices and decisions that are authentic to yourself and meaningful for your own well-being. You can do it by setting goals that are achievable and then work towards them, which will give you a purpose. Making decisions that align with your values and beliefs and taking responsibility for your own happiness and well-being because no one is going to take care of you as much as you do. It's not being selfish, it's creating the life that you want. One, practice self-reflection. Don't just go through life cruising along without reflecting on what's happening. It could be writing, it could be meditating, it could be drawing, whatever way you want to express it. Learn to trust yourself and your gut feeling. If your gut is telling you something is wrong, then something is wrong. And you should be listening to what you feel deeply. Seek out supportive relationships. Alone, we can't do it all. We need people around us. If you think about your best memories, I believe they will be with someone, not just you and someone. So surround yourself with people who believe in you, who mean the best for you, who respect you, treat you well, and love you for who you are. Practice assertiveness. Sometimes it's hard to say no, but if you don't feel like it, you don't have to say yes all the time and it's fine and people should respect that and respect your feelings and respect that maybe one night you don't feel like going out or you don't feel like doing something. It's totally fine to put boundaries and say no. People will respect you for it. The last thing I want to address is how can I get back to my own essence if I feel disconnected from myself? I feel like I'm just on autopilot I'm just working, looking after the kids, running around everywhere without a real purpose or time to even sit down with myself and think about what I want, what I feel like and how I'm feeling. I feel like without reflecting, you won't be able to move forward. So the first thing would be to sit down with yourself. Find the time to sit down with yourself and reflect what is most important to you and what makes you feel authentic and true to yourself. Once you find that, then take the necessary actions to make sure that if it's not aligned with what you're currently going through, then something needs to change. The way to do it is exploring your values, your goals, your beliefs, and identifying things that are probably not in accordance to those. So let's say you put all of this on one side, if you did the exercise on a piece of paper, and then you would look at your life and see if it matches or not, and the areas where it doesn't match, 
then you can work on addressing it. Don't overwhelm yourself. Do a bit of change at a time. It's not that you're going to create a revolution in your life from one day to another. It can also be the time to take a breath from external distractions that are actually getting in the way of your path instead of keeping you on the path. They might direct you somewhere where you actually don't want to be. Focus on your own experience and inner peace and emotions. Get involved with activities that enable you to connect with yourself. Breath work, meditation, find your activity could be yoga. Some people connect with yoga. Just find something that would enable to open your heart and create that inner peace so you can find answers for yourself. Seek out help from professionals. You can ask for opinions. Final word from me today. Why is self-love so important? Without self-love, we can't love others. It is the foundation of your well-being and happiness. When we love and accept ourselves, we're able to feel confident in our own worth. And this can help lead to a more fulfilling and abundant life. It will lead to a more purposeful and meaningful life. Self-love can help us have more positive relationships with others. It allows us to set healthy boundaries and protect our emotions. It also helps meet our needs more effectively. And last but not least, it can help us cope with challenges and external events that might be impacting our life in a negative way. It will help us deal with setbacks in a more positive and authentic way. And it will help us bounce back quicker. Overall, self-love is an important component of well-being and happiness. So make sure you prioritize it. And if I can, leave you today with something, make sure you cultivate it and strive for it. That's it guys, this is the end of this vlog. It's a bit of a different one, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up because it really supports my channel. If you'd like to see more of this kind of content on my channel, make sure you leave a comment below with some of the topics that you'd like to see. In the meantime, be well, take care of yourself, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.